up today, President Park Geun-hye reveals her plans to issue special pardons next month to mark the 70th anniversary of Korea's liberation from Japanese colonialism. Eurozone leaders say they have agreed to give Greece up to 96 billion US dollars in new bailout loans, but only if Athens institutes the harshest austerity measures yet. First Korea will celebrate extra loudly tonight as it marks the end of the 2015 Gwangju Universiad as the top-ranking nation in the medal standings. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello to our viewers around the world. It's 6 a.m. on Tuesday, July 14th here in Seoul. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this morning, President Park Geun-hye, whose campaign pledges included a limited exercise of presidential pardons, has indicated that she plans to exercise that authority for the second time since taking office. Attention now focuses on whether the pardons will be granted to business leaders and politicians. Che Sun starts us off. President Park Geun-hye ordered her senior secretaries on Monday to look into the scope and subject of amnesty in time for the 70th anniversary of Korea's liberation from Japanese colonial rule next month. President Park, who had pledged not to use her amnesty power excessively, has only carried out one set of pardons since taking office in 2013. Even then, she had excluded businessmen and politicians from the list. Korean presidents have traditionally granted pardons on national holidays to highlight national unity or economic revival, some of which were criticized for being privileges. A total of 52 pardons have been granted since 1980, with the current and past two administrations only granting special pardons that do not require parliamentary approval. President Buck has promised to exhaust all means to allow Korean businesses to invest in order to revitalize the economy. However, the question now is whether or not she will grant pardons to the country's business leaders. Serving sentences for embezzlement and dereliction of duty include SK Group Chairman Che tae won his brother and vice chairman Che jae won and HANA Group Chairman Kim seung yeon The business community has been calling for their amnesty, saying they hold the decision-making authority of their firms. But the president, taking aim at past administrations, had said that the public's consent should be considered. The business community on Monday said news of possible amnesty is very encouraging, and the political parties said they hoped the scope of the pardons will not damage the Constitution while working to unite the nation. Che yu Arirang News. And President Park Geun-hye is also calling for the swift passage of the government's multi-billion dollar supplementary budget plan. But deliberation is expected to be fierce. At the National Assembly, standing committees ahead of the main vote for passing the bill, which is set for July 20th. Now, analysis by the Assembly's budget office shows 45 problems have been detected in 36 out of the 145 detailed projects included in the 10.4 billion US dollar supplementary budget plan. Opposing opinions on the party level need to be addressed as well. The ruling Senate party wants to pass the plan as is, while the main opposition New Politics Lines for Democracy is demanding some $5 billion be cut from the proposal. The extra budget was proposed early this month to mitigate the economic fallout from the MERS outbreak and the ongoing drought. Reform was on the minds of both of Korea's main political parties on Monday. Ruling party leader Kim Mu sung proposed a bottom-up open primary to select candidates for next year's general election. And the main opposition, New Politics Alliance for Democracy, also took steps towards structural reform. Park ji -won reports. In the press conference held Monday to commemorate his one-year anniversary as the party leader, Kim Musang vowed to revamp the Conservative Party's candidate selection process for next year's general elections.
He said the party will adopt a bottom-up open primary for the elections instead of the top-bottom style candidate nomination process, which he believes has been the root cause of internal strife within his party. Kim also proposed that the main opposition party adopt the same open primary on the same day. Revamping the candidate nomination process can only be successful if both parties work together. I heard that the NPAD will carry out partial bottom-up selection and a partial top-bottom process. But I'm sure that's not what the public wants. The ruling Conservative Party also designated its new floor leader. Four-term lawmaker Won Yu Cher, chief policymaker under former floor leader Yu Seung Min, will look to earn his fellow lawmakers' official approval at Tuesday's general meeting and begin his term. Watchers say the 52-year-old earned broad support as he is not considered to be in the pro-President Park faction, but maintains a good relationship with the party's Supreme Council members close to President Park geun -hye. With his moderate and neutral stance, he is expected to help resolve the party's internal conflicts and mend relations with the presidential office. Meanwhile, main opposition NPAD subcommittee on Monday voted in favor of a revision of its party constitution to abolish the party's secretary general system to increase fairness for new participants and tackle new challenges. Reform is not an option for us. It is an unavoidable path for the survival of our party for the sake of victory in next year's general elections. The final decision on the party's structural reform will be made next Monday at another committee meeting. However, opposition and conflict are already rife within the party, opposing the ideas. Despite such opposition, the Liberal Party's Reform Committee has also suggested abolishing its Supreme Council system, which will be up for a vote in September. Park ji Arirang News. Now, Eurozone leaders have agreed to offer Greece a third bailout following bruising 17-hour-long negotiations in Brussels. However, the three-year up to 96 billion U.S. dollar bailout that should help Greece avoid total economic collapse for now at least is conditional on the Greek parliament passing agreed reforms by Wednesday. Greece will have to implement the harshest austerity measures yet to be demanded by its creditors, and these include measures to slash pensions, boost tax revenue, and liberalize the country's labor market. Athens will also have to hand 50 billion euros worth of state assets to a privatization fund as collateral. And the misery continues for the people of Greece. The country's finance ministry says Greek banks will remain closed until Thursday and ATM withdrawals are still limited to a meager 60 euros a day. Greece's banks have been shut since June 28th. Another country coming under financial strain is China. The stock market meltdown in the world's second largest economy wiped out nearly a third of its value in just one month period. Uh, the Chinese government is doing all it can to stabilize the market, but it remains to be seen whether Beijing's efforts will work. Kim Minji reports. A month-long market route in China has wiped trillions of dollars off the country's stock markets. According to Bloomberg, China's market value in terms of shares came to about 6.5 trillion U.S. dollars as of last Thursday. That's down more than $3.2 trillion since mid-June. To give that figure some context, it's more than double Korea's GDP. China's stock markets have been one of the best performers in the world, at one point even topping $10 trillion in market value. However, since the middle of last month, the main Shanghai Composite Index has tumbled more than 30 percent as investors began offloading shares amid concerns the market was overheated, as they were extremely overvalued while the Chinese economy was weak. The slump continued despite government action from a suspension of initial public offerings to ease drills on borrowing money for trading to stabilize the market. The Shanghai index fell about 6 percent, while the Shenzhen Composite Index, which tracks stocks in China's second exchange, fell almost 3 percent in a single day, erasing more than $330 billion. As China is the world's second largest stock market by value after the U.S., the market route is raising concerns among investors as volatility could weigh down economies heavily dependent on China for trade. Kim Minji, Arirang News.
Global credit rating agency Fitch Ratings has maintained Korea's sovereign rating at double A minus, saying it reflects the country's macroeconomic performance and solid external balances, as well as retaining the fourth highest investment grade. Korea also had its outlook maintained at stable. Now, both Korea's ratings and outlook have remained unchanged since September 2012. Korea stands one notch above China's A plus rating and two grades higher than Japan's A. Fitch also said Korea was performing well with solid and stable real GDP growth combined with low inflation and unemployment. That said, the agency downwardly adjusted Korea's growth forecast for 2015 to 2.9% from its earlier estimate of 3.5%. Conditions for Korea's electronics and IT sectors look set to improve in the second half of the year, but the outlook is less than rosy for the nation's manufacturers. The Korea Chamber of Commerce says the electronics and IT sectors are expected to lead exports thanks to a growing demand for semiconductors. However, external factors such as the weak Japanese yen have cast doubts on the automobile and shipbuilding industries, which is being reflected in... Korean manufacturer's sentiment for the third quarter. The business survey index for manufacturer's sales outlook stood at 102, and that's down a lot, 12 points from the second quarter. But a reading above 100 does mean optimists still outnumber pessimists. Manufacturers cited the MERS outbreak and the slowdown in the Chinese economy for the decline. More than 200 Koreans from different walks of life will embark on a very special journey today. They are going to be boarding special ex express trains to travel all the way across Asia and into Europe. The participants will gather from across the country at Seoul Station this morning. They're going to be taking part in a launching ceremony of the Eurasia Friendship Express project. They are then going to be divided into two teams, one which will take the Trans-Siberian Railway from Vladivostok in Russia, while the other will depart from Beijing and take the Trans-Mongolia Railway. The two will then meet again in eastern Russia on Sunday. Now, during the 20-day journey, the participants will stop at over 10 cities in five different countries, and uh, establish ties in a diverse range of fields, including economy, culture and also logistics. Their journey will end in Berlin, where various events will take place, marking the 25th anniversary of German unification and the 70th anniversary of the division of the Korean Peninsula. The curtain comes down on the 2015 Gwangju University ad tonight and uh, Team Korea pretty much outperformed everyone's expectations, scooping well over 40 gold medals and sealing top spot in the medal standings. Now, Kim Hyun-bin, who is in Gwangju right now, got to hear from the chief of the Korea delegation to find out the key to the team's success. The host nation Korea exceeded everyone's expectations in terms of its sporting performance at this year's 2015 Gwangju University Odd. By securing the top spot in the medal standings for the first time in its history since the Summer University Odd began in 1959 in Italy. This is the first time Korea has come first in the University Odd and the best result Korea has had in any international summer sports competition. Team Korea racked up 47 gold, 32 silver, and 29 bronze on the penultimate day of the 14-day sporting extravaganza. This is a huge accomplishment as Team Korea's initial goal was to finish third place overall with 25 gold medals. South Korea clinched first place by more than 10 medals, ahead of China and Russia, currently battling for second in the standings. I think that the biggest factor has been that the athletes were able to perform better than ever because the competition was held on home soil. Out of the 21 sporting categories in this year's event, Team Korea dominated 10 of the events including Judo, Archery and Taekwondo. Korea previously topped the medal standings at the 2007 Winter Universiade in Torino, Italy. But this is the country's first time finishing top at the Summer Universiade. Team Korea has performed exceptionally well at this year's Universiad and hopes to continue the momentum for success at the upcoming 2016 Rio Olympics. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News, Gwangju.
Now taking a brief look at the weather before we go. And scorching hot temperatures are set to return this week after the country got a bit of a soaking as Typhoon Chanhom passed by last weekend. Today's daytime highs will be up to 7 degrees Celsius higher than yesterday, soaring well past 30 degrees in Seoul and the southeastern city of Daegu as well as other places. However, the dry conditions will not last that long. Nanka, a stronger typhoon than Chanhom, is expected to affect the southern and eastern parts of Korea, including Jeju Island, between Friday and Saturday. That is, if it stays on its projected course. The 11th typhoon of the season, which is now moving northwards towards Japan, is forecast to bring heavy rain and strong gusty winds. And that's all we have for now. I'm Mark Broom. Have a wonderful day and thank you for tuning in. And we do hope to see you at the same time tomorrow. Till then, goodbye.